everyone I'm here to do the reading for the lovely sign of cancer cancer thank you so much for joining me thank you for your support and all your lovely comments um, so if you're interested in a reading with me uh, my website is now up and running again um, I still got a bit of work I need to do on it but um, for the moment you can still book readings and um, and schedule them in, them in yourself uh, if you're interested in joining me or having a membership with me, everything is below the YouTube videos, but you will need to do that on a on the main site, on the main YouTube site. So on a computer or just logging into the site itself rather than using the app. Um, all right, let's just have a quick chat about cancer. So if you identify yourself as a cancer, it generally means your cancer is your sun sign. But when you were born, you were born into a time where all the planets align just especially for you. So sometimes it's really good to look at what other planets were really um, prominent when you were born. And you can do that by looking up um, natal chart or birth chart. And I just thought of something. I might just write it down then I won't think about it. Um, And you can put in the details of your birth. If you have your time of birth, it's really good because you can get your um, your rising or your ascendant that way as well. But without that, you can still get a pretty good birth chart. So what it will show you is where all the planets were and what houses they were in when you were born, which will show an aspect of your personality. And so it's really good. It's actually quite surprising how accurate they can be. Um, but it's also a lot of fun. So I know that a lot of the people who have been watching me for a while now will say to me and they put the little signs in and tell me what they are. So I really love enjoy I really enjoy looking at what people have found out about themselves. Okay, so we're using the Ethereal Tarot for the reading today, which is the beautifully gold embossed one. And look, I've come straight up with the Empress there. How very nice. Um, I think I've got everything. And we'll pull you an oracle card from the Shaman's Dream. All right, we are ready. Okay, so we're starting off with the Judgment card. Now, the Judgment card is a card that talks of rebirth. It talks of something coming around again. It talks of being raised from the dead. Um, but it, it also is the ending or the, close to the ending of a cycle. So when we look at the Arcana, the major Arcana, for instance, we have from 0 through to 21, um, and we have a story that is being told. And when we go on a cycle, we work our way through all of those lessons until we get to the end spot. And when we get to that last end spot, it means we've completed all the lessons for that cycle. And generally, the judgment card sort of means that, you know, you've discarded some sort of part of yourself or some way of doing or being, and you're about to start on a new pathway. So we've got the judgment card coming around and behind that we have the six of pentacles. I love that energy and the world card. So whatever this cycle is here, I can tell you now you have really learned what you deserve and what your value is. So some of us go through life without really recognizing our own value. We all do it. You know, um, we do it with our work. We do it with our relationships. We invest too much. We love too much. Um, and we're so busy pleasing other people that we forget what we deserve. This to me, just in itself, in those three cards, says you've learned a really big lesson on how to look after yourself, how to make sure that you are getting what you want from life, which is so important. Let's just go a bit further. So the world card is now finishing out that cycle. And we have the Ten of Pentacles and the Hierophant behind that. How beautiful. Cancer, I feel like life is just going to really turn around for you it feels to me like you've really understood something and you may have worked through something so say for example you've had an experience that's sort of thrown you for a loop maybe the breaking up of a relationship maybe the breaking down maybe you, you know losing a job whatever it is and it's thrown you onto this huge learning curve and I feel like you've come out the other side but maybe your self-esteem or your confidence was eroded in that process but to me, it makes me feel like you are really stepping into yourself with that judgment card. Um, and whatever opportunities that you were looking for before feel like they're about to fall on your path either again or there's to be some repeat of that. 
So let's have a look. So we have the Page of Pentacles with the Knight of Pentacles, the Ten of Wands and the Knight of Swords. I feel like here, especially with the Knight of Pentacles and that Knight of Swords, that somebody may be coming towards you as a process of that ending of a cycle. I feel like somehow or another there's an offer that's going to be made. Now, I don't see that it's romantic at this point in time. However, once the cards come out, we'll see that. But there's definitely communication. Somebody's rushing in quite quickly to communicate with you, and I see them holding something. So it could be an apology. It could be an offer of work, offer of money. But something is definitely coming in through you for you here. Four of Swords is here with the Hanged Man and the Emperor. I feel that you've done a bit of healing around sort of looking back at something and trying to work out what it was about this particular situation that maybe sort of made you feel a little bit um, incomplete. When I talk about confidence and self-esteem, there was something about a situation that you've recently gone through that's left you feeling a little bit down on yourself. Now, I think this is really interesting because we've all gone through this. No matter how much work you do, sometimes people can really rip our sails and stop us moving forward, just in the simplest thing. And some people can lie or be hurtful purely because they know they have the power to hurt you. And I feel like you're starting to understand that process. So, for example, if somebody, you know, says something to you that cuts really deep, rather than sort of looking inside and saying, is that the truth about myself or is this person just trying to rip me down? What you're doing is you're taking notice of what the other pe person is saying to you. And it's really cutting deep. It's hurt you. But I feel like somehow or another you're starting to see this from a different perspective. Perhaps you're starting to understand that it's what you think of yourself that counts, not so much what other people are saying. You know, I think that there is, you know, a level of honesty in relationships. I think, you know, if you're with your friend and you've gone out clothes shopping and your friend says, I really don't like that outfit on you, then I think you trust, you know, where that's coming from. But sometimes, I, I you know, I've done it myself where I've been, you know, in a place where I've been trying on clothes and the, and the salesperson will tell somebody that an outfit looks great on them and I think it looks absolutely hideous. But I wouldn't say to the person, you look absolutely awful in that outfit because it's not my place to do that. I might do it when I have a close friend or a close relationship. The problem is sometimes we meet people and we can be extremely close to them, but they can have a very spiteful way about them or be jealous of you. Or we've all had those people, you know, that have posed as good friends. Um, and when they say something to us, we really take it to heart because we trust where that's coming from. And it can happen in relationships. So, you know, if you have a close relationship with someone where you trust what they're telling you, you might take that to heart. And I feel like that's somehow what you've been working on. But I see this power coming back. I see you, King of Pentacles, coming through with the Two of Swords. There it is. And the Ten. So you're about to close out the cycle. I feel like somebody is coming in that may have hurt you in the past. I'm not sure there is nothing in this situation that makes me feel like um, it's a love situation. So it could be a family member or a friend, but somebody you crossed paths with in the past who probably has realized what they've done and they may have regrets. And I feel like they're coming in to maybe ask for an apology, trying to put something right. The problem is here, I think you've grown so much that maybe you're seeing this person as not being genuine or not being real about what they're saying. And I feel like for that reason, you are now closing out another cycle. All right, so we're going to put the Ten of Cups on that. Look at that, Ten of Swords to the Ten of Cups. There is a huge decision that lies with this. Um, for some of you, it could be an ex-partner, um, but there is no love here. So it doesn't look to me like it's somebody who's trying to confess love to you or, you know, tell you what you mean to them. It doesn't feel like that. What it feels like is somebody has realized how much they hurt you in the past and they're trying to put it right. I'm not really sure whether this is about, you know, somebody not somebody being dishonest. It doesn't sort of feel dishonest in a way. 
but it may be that they've realized how much you had to offer and how they hurt you by doing what they did so we have the judgment card so i feel like this is what's coming around again um so i have the six of pentacles coming through with the world card so there's a cycle closing i feel like you've got in yourself into a place where you're looking at things in a very like i call being the observer looking at things in a real logical way because what we have tend to do if we've had a you know an emotional experience even for each childhood trauma we can have what they call emotional dysregulation which means we look at everything through our emotions and it's not very helpful so for example you know if you um if somebody does something to you if you're if you've sort of worked your way through childhood trauma, then you will understand that sometimes when people hurt you, it's about them, not about you. Now, if you've done the wrong thing and you know that, that's a little bit different. But if you feel like somebody's been hurtful or nasty just for the sake of ripping you down or putting you down, then you'll start to realise that perhaps that isn't really in your best interest. So to me, you know, moving from this Ten of Swords, we actually have the Ten of Wands here as well, to the Ten of Cups energy makes me feel like you really understood how to stand up for yourself. And that's not about arguing or yelling back or, you know, being defensive. It's about saying, this is your problem, not mine. So, oh, we had the Ten of Pentacles. So you've had all four tens here. And we're ending up with the Hierophant. So something is definitely changing the way you see your world. And I feel like somebody is about to step back in and like try to put something right that happened in the past. I feel like for some of you it could be a parent um, or a sibling um, that maybe really hurt your feelings in the past, but maybe they're trying to understand now what exactly happened. As I said, I don't think they're being deceitful. I think they genuinely have realised what they've let go. If it is a relationship, if it's a person that you've had a relationship with, this isn't about resuming a love relationship. This is about saying, I'm really sorry. You know, we had something really good going on and I didn't respect you for that. I lashed out. But whatever it is, it's really, it's really getting you to understand where you need to listen to your own intuition rather than taking other people's ideas on board and living by them. That's your ego. All right, let's have a look. Shaman's dream. Okay, we have stars in the sky and limitless possibilities. It is card 51. When you look up into the velvety dark blanket of the night sky covering the vast expanse of space, can you count all the stars twinkling above? Can you imagine that you are only glimpsing a tiny sliver of what is actually there? This is the domain of limitless possibilities, of the never-ending sea of potential that you yourself are made of and are now at your disposal. Your life now is alive of possibility and needs your clear focus to call, to home in on whatever avenue of exploration has caused you. I'm sort of distracted because I'm thinking, I really understand what they're saying here. It's like, have you allowed other people to hold you back from your potential? Like if somebody says to you, you're not very good at doing something, perhaps you don't do it anymore because you think, well, if I'm not good at it, what's the point of keep going with it? But in reality, you might be brilliant at it, but somebody might be really fearful of how you could knock them out of the running for something or do better than them. And I feel like you're dealing with this, with this really sort of competitive nature in someone. So it could be like your family... Um, I remember one of my family members saying to me, you always thought you were better than everyone else. And I remember going away and feeling really horrible about that because I've never in my life felt better than anyone else. Never. I've never really thought about it. And it just sort of made me think, what am I doing that makes you think that I feel like I'm better than you? Because that just isn't where I'm coming from here. But then I remember speaking to a counsellor and she said to me, people will say that because it's their measure of what they're seeing. So I stopped to think about it and I thought, that's it, isn't it? If people don't feel as good as you, they're going to try and rip you down to make themselves feel better. And I feel like somehow or another you're seeing this. And because of this, you're changing the way you do things and you're trying to express yourself in a different way. Because perhaps somebody stopped you doing something. For example, I love to sing. 
can I sing like an opera singer? Can I sing like a famous singer? Absolutely not, but I love singing. But you know, over time, when people have said to me, oh, you can't sing, I, I used to think, oh, well, okay, I won't sing anymore. What is that? So now I think if I'm singing and somebody says to me, you can't sing, I'm like, I don't care. I love to sing. Why would I care? So those are just little experiences that I've had that might help you to see how you need to change that way you see your world. But I will leave you with that, Cancer. Thank you so much for joining me today.